permaculture actually falls into two parts. You know, we tend to think of it as being one thing, but actually it had its own development. And there was what I call original permaculture, which is what David Holmgren and Bill Mollison developed um, first and expressed in the book called Permaculture One. And then that developed into design permaculture. I'll be talking about design permaculture tomorrow, but today I'm going to be talking about original permaculture. So, um, permaculture was, uh, it has been practiced by people for thousands of years without ever calling it permaculture and still is by people in different parts of the world. But as an idea and as a word, it was invented by these two Australians, Bill Mollison and David Holmgren, in the 1970s. And they were inspired by the contrast between natural ecosystems and our cultivated systems. So they said, look at uh, a natural ecosystem, which in most parts of the world, where there's enough rainfall for agriculture, the natural ecosystem is some kind of woodland or forest. And you have tall trees, shorter trees, have bushes, shrubs, ground cover, climbers, and then of course you've got all the, uh, all the roots down below. An enormous amount of biomass compared with a typical human food producing system, say a wheat field, almost two dimensional, just sort of half a metre high with the modern short straw varieties. The total amount of biomass produced, and biomass just means living material, produced every year is far greater in the natural ecosystem. Uh, you know, it's not just that it's accumulated over time, but actually the annual production, because there's so much more opportunity for growth to take place, because it's three-dimensional, and then lots of different kinds of plants. Uh, in, for those of you who are familiar with the science of ecology, there are more niches to be filled. Um, not only that, but it takes an awful lot of energy to actually create and maintain the wheat field. You have to remove the pre-existing vegetation, plough, harrow, sow the seeds, do some kind of weed control, some kind of pest control. In many parts of the world, irrigation. You get to the end of the year, you, have, you harvest, you have to turn around and do it all over again. Meanwhile, the natural ecosystem needs nothing but a bit of sun, a bit of rain, and the rock from which it makes its own soil. And at the same time, of course, the wheat field is constantly losing soil by process of soil erosion. How happy we would be, said Mollison and Holmgren, if we could produce a system which has the high yield, the low need for external inputs, the lack of negative ecological impact of the natural ecosystem, but also had the high proportion of useful product which the wheat field has. Because of course that's why we grow wheat and potatoes and all these other things that we grow. We grow them because a very high proportion of the biomass that they produce is high quality human food. About 50% or more in the case of wheat. And uh, whereas in the natural ecosystem, only a very small proportion of that is going to be useful to us. So the aim of permaculture <coughs> the, is to combine those two, and we could express that in two words, so edible ecosystems. That's our aim is to produce edible ecosystems. Uh, edible is a bit of a shorthand there because actually what we, we need to produce all of our needs, our needs for 
clothes and buildings and heating and other kinds of fuel and so on and so forth. Uh, but actually that's quite a nice way of expressing it. And so what I'm going to do next is look at the different principles which apply to original permaculture. Because in original permaculture, what Mollison and Holmgren did is they made a fairly literal imitation of a natural ecosystem. And what I talk about tomorrow, the, uh, um, the copy of the ecosystem is going to be a little bit less obvious. And they first expressed this in, in their original book, which was called Permaculture One. <laughs> 